uh, hello everyone. Um, mm -hmm. I'm super glad to be here. I'm uh, Amory Campion, and maybe as you already heard from my accent, I'm only a French guy doing VR. <laughs> uh, so uh, I'm uh, the director of Goodbye Mr. Octopus and uh, I'm very happy to be here presenting uh, kind of making of the short movie um, so it's uh, like we are super glad it has been um, selected for a Venice festival so uh, giving the queer community a, a more highlight I guess so I'm um, super stoked for this and so goodbye mr octopus is a it's, it's a short movie entirely made in quill um so actually everything you could have seen in the short has been made in quill but so yes everything was made in quill but <laughs> it's maybe a bit of a lie because uh not everything everything but uh, we will get back to this uh, later so the production team, uh, it's a co-production with uh, Atlas V Studio and Sio Gepetto. Um, Sio Gepetto was more part of the creative aspect and uh, Atlas V uh, everything else, which is a huge part. I'm willing now to present you a bit more of the creative team. <laughs> so uh, on the creative team, uh, there is um, first uh, me, I'm a computer director. Then we have uh, Magdalena Dianova who designed the characters, Thibaut Denise who designed the backgrounds, uh, Betty Surig who helped Thibaut on uh, some backgrounds also, um, and Vayana who helped on the keys, colors for the characters. And then working in Quill, we have uh, Lea who designed the characters in VR and all the backgrounds. And Fred Rimbaud and Lana Choukroun, who made the animation with me on Goodbye Mr. Octopus. On the audio point of view, we have Peter Sandberg, who made the music. Clément, who worked in Quill to make the sound design and the special audio mixing. And Eleonore, who made the, the, all the folly. With all this great team, we were <laughs> successful to make this uh, this short movie, so hopefully you understood uh, it was clearly not a uh, one guy work and uh, it's a effort of a big team and I'm super happy to have worked with all these people. Um, let's talk a bit more now about the character designs. There have been a lot of design that had been made um, and when I say a lot, it's a lot, really. Uh, so first we have Stella the main character so we have a design when she's 16 years old in the present time when she's a baby in the arm of the um, uh, the parents when she's one year old three years old and six years old um, when we see her growing we have uh, leonard uh, at present time uh, when he's younger and uh, at the middle age we have uh, Liv, the mother when she's in the jungle when in the kitchen it's actually different outfits and different hairstyles of course, we have Mr. Octopus and uh, some dancers you could have seen in the water um, and uh, on Earth uh, on the jumping tower scene. So talking a bit more about Stella, I will now show you the work of Magdalena, um, like uh, trying to find a good character design on, uh, on this character. Um, it was not that easy to have... Um, a good um, charm on this character and to express the fact she is a teen she she loved her mother she's in conflict with her father and um, so we we tried many different things and actually it's uh, the one in the middle i like the most because we have on her hair design like a very wild side um, that for me re reflect the mother and a bit <laughs> more calm side uh, on her right hair reflect the father so I found that very uh, interesting to have this in the design of the character. We did different color tests, uh, so first mm. in Photoshop, and then also like a color light rendering test to really test before Quill uh, what we can achieve. And so from this design, uh, Leah made the, the character of, um, of Stella. As you can see, first we wanted to have like a uh, hair very um, smooth, but at some point we decided to go with curly hair. Uh, I don't know if it was a good idea for optimization and uh, 
<laughs> or everything like this. But clearly, I think it uh, it helped like uh, a lot to have like uh, I don't know uh, like a better character. Yeah. Um, yeah. Betty yeah. made uh, some test also from uh, the small Stella that I find very cute that I really wanted mm. to to show you. Um, also, how her hair could have been before. So, um, well, first one it was the one we 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 go with. In Quill, it went like this. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if you noticed, but Stella has a yellow color tendency. Mm -hmm. um, and I will explain this later why. Um, now we go with Leonard. So um, what I wanted with Leonard is that uh, his shape uh, is changing uh, over time. We see him first with the, like a big shape really um uh, reserved um stiff uh, if i can if i can say and when he was younger he was much more confident and thinner um i wanted to to show the evolution of his uh, mindset with the shapes also um so so that's why when he's younger he is not uh, like he's when older um mm. So we tried different things, uh, but actually what we liked the most was something quite a uh, diamond shape uh, and with a beard because he looks cool with the beard. And, uh, and so that's how we, we made it uh, in, um, in Quill uh, and with different colors. Uh, we wanted to have some fun with also the hair when he was younger. Uh, we didn't go to too crazy uh, actually as you can see of the 17 and the 18s are not so much different from when he's older the 19 and 20 are 21 are maybe too modern um, and so the 20 drawing seemed good and easier to make in quill uh, about Liv so she's uh, active, confident, and like really to, willing to do. We would see her only um, in the letter, in the kind of flashbacks or like the um, perception of uh, Stella, what she has. So she wouldn't change too much uh, of shape, but it's much more the outfit uh, that will change. Um, and she has uh, like a, a greener, we, we wanted to go for a greener um, look. And so, as I said, um, Stella was in uh, in yellow, Leonine in red, and I live in green. It's because uh, I wanted to to give that aspect that uh, when we add light uh, between red and green, uh, the yellow happens. So I found it quite cool to have this in immediately, like inside the the, the design of the characters. Mm. That's super cool. Um, then Mr. Octopus, so here are some tests that we tried for Mr. Octopus. Mm. Um, but as you can imagine, some are quite harder to animate in Quill, so we went for something quite easy. Not, not easy, but I mean easier, per se. <laughs> uh, about the backgrounds, um, the first thing we, we worked on was uh, the room. Uh, I really had the, that in mind that uh, the short movie should start with the door closed and ends with the doors open almost from the same point of view and that uh, when the door is open there is a light uh, showing, like highlighting a poster of the mother. Um, mm -hmm. Like for me it was important in the narrative construction mm -hmm. of the story. So. Um, you can see immediately at the beginning the there is the place of the poster, there is a place of the door, and the door should uh, be in a very specific place to 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 show the poster at the end. Then we we like the, really the the upper left version because there is a, the shelf that is deconstructing the the shape of the like it's not a square but it's helping to to having different spaces in the room. So many people tell me that indeed she has a big room for a teenage girl, uh, <laughs> which I agree, but it's not that big. So let's say um, they are in the, um, in suburbs or uh, like a, 
a place where you can have more space. So clearly not in a Parisian apartment. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, a very American house. <laughs> yeah. So so that was fine. Um, we first tried uh, before doing so much details in the um, in the two D version. We made layouts in Quill to be sure it worked. Of course. So for me, it's a huge uh, value is to, to be able to really make layouts quickly and uh, understand if it works or not. And um, I was afraid first that we felt more, we felt kind of claustrophobic in the room if the character are too small. So <clears throat> having a, a bigger room with a lot of details uh, was uh, easier in a way for us to, to, to not feel oppressed by the walls. <clears throat> um, we had to design three different um, color scheme for uh, the room. So here you can see in the in the daytime, the daytime. Then we have in the um, evening. evening and mm -hmm. in the night. Um, so we wanted to have a crossfade uh, between the the rooms. But as you can imagine, if we have like a huge room in the day uh, colors. Fading with a, a huge room in the evening uh, colors. Uh, at some point during the fade, uh, Quill will say, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Draw a call and polycon madness, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we went for a cut, but I think it works still. Uh, yeah. But if, if there is a cut, we should be sure that everything should be at the same position before and after. And so Leah made a really great job uh, there by uh, doing first um, all the modelization from the uh, the, the day uh, the day colors, and then taking all the objects and changing the colors depending on the, the, the thing. So it was a huge job. I love that and, sunset. Looks so cool. Yeah, mm. and uh, so yeah, sunset like this in Quill works pretty well. I agree. And yeah, like this also from the other side. And I don't know if you notice everything, but there are a lot of Easter eggs in the in the <laughs> mm -hmm. rooms. So maybe we can go later after because even me, I didn't notice all the Easter eggs. And we, I talked with Leah some days ago, and she made me a list of everything <laughs> she put in it. So so if you found something later, we, we can discuss maybe. Um, about the other um, background. So. Uh, what was made um, uh, for the living room. It's Betty who made the, the, the design of the living room um, with this wall in the, between the kitchen and the living room. I really wanted this wall with this big hole in it so you could, you could be curious to, to, to see through and see what's going on. I think it works well in VR to to put object in the middle and so it will force the audience to to look around or to look through it mm, um, yeah. and so also it's quite well delimited with the, the desk of leave with the all the the shelves and the books she has um, uh, on one side and um, and so the living room changing also if there is um, stella when she's smaller so with toys or not so also different versions of the living room has, had to be made. And finally, the, the jungle was made like this uh, first. And so you can see here, there is a version of uh, leave directly in the illustration. And actually for each, for each background, we, we made uh, different colors uh, version of the characters that should be in the background so we can have um, homogeneity between well, an homogeneity of all the characters in the scene. Now I really want to talk about the music, about the um, the short movie. Uh, for me, music is really super super important in the short, um, in a film because uh, that's the thing that will uh, uh, polish everything, that will uh, make cohesion between everything. And if you listen to the the short movie. If you watch the short movie without the music, really, it's not the same flavor. It's not the same taste. So, 
Uh, and actually, for a fun fact, um, the idea of the story of Goodbye Mr. Octopus was inspired by music, also by a song. Hmm. So for me, music was a big part of the, the project. So in the midic, there is uh, three connected musical moments, um, one of which is important, which is in the, in the letter. So we have the intro credits, the moment of time ellipses which stop when Leonard knocks on the door and uh, when reading the letter. So uh, during the intro credits and time lapse ellipses, are, it's a connected theme. Uh, it's the same musical theme uh, with a piano and guitar. Um, piano show the theme and guitar express more the feeling of Stella. And that's why at the end, uh, we really hear much more of the guitar and uh, much more in the happier way. So during the, the letter, we have like a different moments. And so I, I will try to explain to you without any sound the difference between uh, the music if that interests you. So first we have um, kind of percussion uh, items during the jungle with marimba. We just support the immersion. We have it through the jumping tower with uh, um, songs by the women. And then we have also this water drumming experience that I found super cool. Uh, I discovered this from the Vanuatu people, and I found it so incredible that I really wanted to have it on, on the short. Uh, it's like basically making music with uh, with water. And so I contacted uh, like um, a, a band from Vanuatu to to have this music, and so super mm. cool. Cool. Um, yeah. yeah, and then after this piece, we we get back to a more inspiring music, uplifting and uh, cocooning. So when showing everything about family life, we are using uh, more uh, cello and violin um, mm. to have a more emotional uh, aspect. And then after this, when um, she's telling him that she's pregnant, um, there is more emotional tension. And so there is a rise in power of only the cello in what we call the void, uh, expressing mm. more the loneliness of the moment and the emotion and the loss of senses until this moment when she's uh, entering what we call the comfortable void where she's feeling much more uh, confident. And so we go back to a more normal uh, music with the guitar that enters in the story because, of course, Stella is entering the story. And slowly, because um, she's fading out of the life of the family, also all the instruments are fading out, uh, except the piano that emphasizes the living uh, and the consistency of the story. I don't know if you noticed all the details, but for me, it was really important. So I really encourage you to, to watch it again, maybe. <laughs> and uh, like, uh, if you, maybe you will feel more emotion by focusing on the, the music. I don't know. Well, I'm really proud of what Peter did with the, the music. So, um, yeah, it works, it, works in a, it works in a level that is subconscious. So you don't yeah. really notice it, but you feel it. I think it's... Well, yeah, sometimes you don't want the audience to notice it too much, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it's definitely a feel for sure, yeah. and it works beautifully. So yeah, that that's what I wanted. I didn't want to have the music that was too powerful, but something that uh, make cohesion. So uh, we we'll talk about the character topology. Um, We'll, we'll, be, we'll get back to this uh, more in detail when we go into Quill, but for instance, here are three models that made Lea. So you can see we go with the, the first shape of uh, the characters and then trying to change uh, the outfits to match the scenes. Um, how we built the, the face um, here, uh, like, we forced the colors of the face. Um, of course, we didn't have this level of details everywhere, but for instance, when we have a leaf that is in huge scale in front of us, we needed to have this uh, level of details. So mm. what's interesting that all the eye is made with only one brush, well, one type of brush. Uh, so it could have been uh, in a different layer uh, without changing the number of the rock holes. 
and uh, then um, I think everything uh, else in the, the face is also one uh, brush. So it's really to keep the consistency in the draw calls. Um, for the lip sync, we made also different uh, mountains. Uh, but when working with it, it was not on the side. It was uh, all on one layer, but on different frames. So we have a library. And uh, we can we can back to it. Um, uh, we can show you this later. Um, so how so it, sorry it will be between French and English. So for example <laughs> here it's a um, it's an overall rig. Uh, don't mind the triangles. It's uh, not at all optimized. Uh, so the the final version is not uh, that big. So we have the lips, the head, the upper body, and the lower body. And um, so it, actually in the head, for instance, uh, while modeling, we had the like, accessory, the face, the eyes, um, the lips. That was not made yet at that time. Uh, hair, some lines, um, well, everything. And so we wanted to have this kind of um, separation between the layers we could change the colors easily before animating. That's a huge part of the workflow is we had to make different colors of the characters into the scene mm -hmm. before animating the clean, the clean part. Um, so it's the same thing for the upper body and the lower body. We'll get back to this in, inside Quill, um, if you will. Um, a few words about the animation, um, which is a big part of the project. Um, <laughs> so I wanted to have something quite close to traditional animation. That means um, interpolation less. Uh, and if it's not perfect, that's OK. Like uh, I prefer to keep the charm of uh, handmade animation and feeling the animator hand behind rather than something super fluid. So that worked well with the kind of stop motion feeling. And that was a, a, a part of the discussion with uh, the cool team when um, discussing about the boundaries of the software. We kind of pushed in a way the boundaries because first we 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 wanted to do everything in um, frame by frame, but we discovered that it would have been a huge file with a lot of data, and so a huge file with a lot of data wouldn't have worked on the, the quest. We had to play a lot with the, the limits of the draw calls, the limits of the, the triangles, the geometry, and the data. Playing with the limits for, for us, it was kind of like jumping, like all these ropes was the limits, and we had to kind of art, artistic <laughs> movements and trying to be lower the limits than upper the limits and trying to change uh, too much all the time so it was that guy is amazing by the way Holy yeah God. yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's uh it was kind of uh sportish it was fun in a way but uh afterward we we found the fun in this but, uh, later. so maybe now we can go to a quill session i would like to show you uh four different things uh, maybe how we worked with a png in the rooms uh, because that's what I said at the beginning, everything was made in Quill, but actually um, everything was built in Quill. Then we changed some things with PNGs to have um, uh, better, uh, like less uh, geometry optimization. Yeah, for optimization. Um, the character topology um, and uh, also maybe the lip sync method, even if uh, it has been uh, already said, so we will go uh, very quick on this, like on other streams, it has been uh, really covered already. And a little technique uh, of uh, cleaning animation um, that uh, I call the la technique des petits points. So in French, that means uh, the little dot techniques. So. <laughs> I'm sure already there are many people using it, but uh, I'm quite proud of the name. So, <laughs> so, so I will show you uh, how I, um, how we made this, and uh, and so let's go. Let's jump into Quill. Um, what I wanted to show you first it's the um, 
the room. So how it was made? Um, uh, Lea spent weeks and weeks on this. As you can see, there are a lot, a lot of details. Um, we first made like the everything in the um, on in the walls because it's actually the walls and the um, the floor and the roof that are in uh, in PNG. Mm -hmm. uh, we made it in uh, in um, in uh, in VR in Quill, and then we took a screenshot, mm -hmm. and uh, then we imported the screenshot in uh, in Photoshop, and then we had to do a template. The reason why we had to do a template is, as I told you, there are cuts uh, between the um, the the rooms, the different version of the rooms. So, if uh, at some point uh, we took a, sc a screenshot like in Quill um, in the daylight, it wouldn't have been perfectly the same than in the evening light. So we had to keep the consistency of the template in Photoshop. Um, so you would just uh, re-import uh, the night scene yeah. so it's exactly in the same place? Yeah, exactly. So you can see um, here I have a folder called PNG with wall one, wall two, wall three, wall four, and the floor and the background because there is like also uh, a background for the yeah yeah of course yeah a 360 exactly yeah. um and so the way we worked is we had all the png and then it's quite easy to to take and re-import another file so we could already iterate and start working with the layouts and then changing uh, every time there is a new version of the room, we could change uh, directly in the um, in the last file. Mm -hmm. um, that makes sense. But so um, our way of doing is, for instance, I will try to, um, for example, import. Uh, uh, up, uh, the like a file to show you. Um, for example, this scene, this uh, wall. When you import it, it's a, uh, it's placed somewhere in the space. So um, it's very important to first um, reset the transform, and then with the gimbal, you have access to. Um, to straight, yeah, to yeah, to straight movements. So, uh, so it's easy to to place first and to have like a very perpendiculars and uh, parallels, um, parallel backgrounds, like parallels mm -hmm. uh, walls. Um, um, so, for instance, here we have, yeah, and then once the wall is uh, placed for uh, one room. Uh, you only have to import the walls for the other uh, rooms, and you will be sure it's in the same place and uh, in the same. Um, um, and you only have to re-import uh, the um, the the file with another version of the light, and um, yeah. and everything works. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, it makes sense. Um, yeah. Then uh, maybe I will show you the the final project how it looks. Um, in terms of um, how we built the different scenes, because mm -hmm. it's something that was quite important in our workflow, is that um, the um, the possibility to have animators working on one scene while um, the designer, the VR designer, working on the same scene, but from different. Um, different uh, files. That people can work simultaneously. Yeah, right? exactly. Uh, so I will just turn off the audio. You can do it at the top, the mute button at the very top. At the very, at the top? very top of the navigation. Yeah. Higher, higher, higher. higher, higher. Oh, there. Wow. Mute so on. We are learning every, every, <laughs> <laughs> every day we are learning. <laughs> so. <laughs> 
So okay, I didn't know this. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, there is what we call the the experience, which is the titles, the introduction, and the end titles, the transitions that are actually um, backgrounds. Um, 360 very mm -hmm. colors that are um, fixed to the viewer point of view so mm -hmm. for example if um, if I'm playing the, the background here uh, it's really linked to the um, let's say it's really linked to my position so you can see here it's locked to viewer and it's 360 it's only a black square and so in order to have this fade out and fade in. Um, to elaborate on what that is actually, um, basically what that means is it's attached to your headset. So if you move yeah. your head around, that yeah. 360 sphere will go with your head. So yeah. that will make sure that, you know, you, you won't be able to see anything. <laughs> yeah. You move around. And yeah. there is something quite funny uh, with this is if you, like if someone wants to have this idea, is if you make it a bit bigger, it's like you have uh oh, it's not working. Okay. Yeah. It's like it's like you have a like a match box, like a match. And so you can if you're close to it, you can watch things. And so I find it pretty cool. Yeah. So oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, like, <laughs> you, you can have like sp uh, spooky things happening. <laughs> there you go. That's an, <laughs> an idea for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, nice. so this is how we dealt with transition. And then we have um, the experience with uh, audio part, the animation, and the backgrounds. So to elaborate on what you just did, is you basically fade in that sphere. And when it's black, that's when you swap the scene, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we have, for instance, here we have the, the blue lines showing uh, where it's at the top yeah. of, uh, of the transition. And right at the top, there is a, the change of the scene. So we don't okay. have too much wrong calls. Uh, Separated each department in a, in a, in a separate folder. So, it, so each department can work separately, right? Yeah, but... exactly. So uh, then we have the three sequences. So let's go to see, for example, the second sequences, which is basically the letter part. In the letter that are, um, you can see here, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. And what we did is that we built the, um, the backgrounds and the animation respecting the scale of the characters, which means we have the characters that will keep the same scale, and then we, we build the backgrounds with like a template of uh, each character to be sure it's at the right scale. Then afterward, we create a folder, and it's this folder who will change the scale. So it's not inside the... Um, the the animation or each scene so that means that for example the 2.1 is during the jungle here if i if there is a change at the jungle i can import the scene of the jungle mm -hmm. then slide in the folder and when sliding in the folder i can check this uh, transfer object and when i put reset uh, reset transform it will Jumps get back, planes. yeah. It it will it will fit with the 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 scale of the the parent the parent group. Yeah. yeah. So by this we will uh, really uh, keep out all the 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 issues of uh, being sure that everything is at the right scale, and so. We said at the beginning everything is made on the on the characters, and then the the scene changing and the scene scale is made at the end uh, in the um, in the assemblage file. Yeah, master group. Yeah, in master group. Yeah. <laughs> Um, here we go, and so I wanted to show you a bit more of the workflow also of um, of a specific scene. 
which is a 212. So um, it's after the, the comfortable void and when she's disappearing little by little. So um, this is uh, the storyboard. So how we did the storyboard is like really simply with stick figures uh, to give a, a time, like a, a feeling of time. And uh, I will only hit play so you can see how rough it is. So um, it's only showing the movement, the, the position, the the disappearing of everyone at that's that time. Really, yeah, sorry. That's really interesting. Did you do this against a white background or against a raw version of the background? Um, for this scene, because there was no background, uh, we did it obviously without. But for other things, we have layouts and a rough backgrounds. Wow. Yeah. Really, without it? That's that's crazy. Yeah, but we obviously. Yeah, there is like when you have a guide and uh, yeah, afterward you can easily select everything and have it. Um, I mean, Move it straight and, and uh, everything. So, yeah. but this is in um, in um, in frame by frame, like in yeah. a not transform keyframe, but in frame. So yes, here there is. I don't know. Oh, it's very even, like the 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 rhythm of your keys is like one every ten frames. No, one every twenty four. Yeah, so it's uh yeah, kind of. It's one only yeah, the storyboard is uh like one every second to almost unless when it's Interesting. uh. Yeah, to keep a nice rhythm. No. Uh, yeah. So. As you can see at, at the beginning, the um, the um, uh, Leonard is um, standing up with Stella baby, but we discover later that uh, actually when doing the animation between um, and, and this part, it's mm -hmm. it was much longer to make him put her on the floor, and then mm -hmm. uh, so we decided to go for a a version when he's already seated on the floor and mm. then everything. Mm. So there, there is this idea first of um, she's on the, on the right, she goes on the left. She had to go on the left because everything before it, we were turning the, the head on the right. So we had to, in a way, uh, change the rotation of the head because otherwise we would always circling in the, in the same direction so i wanted a bit of diversity in the in the animation mm -hmm. and, and so here we are and up oh, it's over uh you can see already at the at the beginning of the um, the the storyboard i made some test uh with uh with live like this because i don't know if you noticed but at this time she's looking at us Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, so I wanted to try <laughs> to to try this effect. So, wow. so actually, it's a simple illusion trick. Is the eye is uh, inside, and uh, so and so when, <laughs> when you oh, move around, it's concave instead of yeah, convex. exactly. Oh, convex so, instead of con oh, yeah. convex. Of concave, I never remember which one. No, I think you were no, right. No, it's, it's concave. It's concave, yeah, concave. Yeah. You were right, yeah. That's so, cool. and because That's super cool, man. <laughs> and and because she she she's not like if we're like this, it could uh, it could yeah. even still work. But because she's yeah. quite uh, far away, it works also very well. Genius! Wow. So that was <laughs> I, I wanted that part of the letter when she's looking at us to, to emphasize the emotion. Um, so that was part of the storyboard. Then we have the rough animation. So here we are. I show you how it Also goes. frame by frame, right? Yeah, also frame by frame, yes. And it's, uh, I have a question. Do, do you yeah. do this? The stick figures are based on the real proportions. Of exactly, the real, yeah. So there, you made the character first, the, the final one, and then yeah. you did the stick figures after yeah. yeah actually if you can see here i have a uh, we have a folder called ref perso like which is a character's reference Different, and so yeah. um, we do stick figures with the character so we keep a consistency in the scale 
Oh, okay. And nice. uh, and so afterward, like uh, I don't know, every ten seconds or every time we feel we could be losing the consistency of the scale, um, we we get back to this reference to to be sure it's uh, at the right scale. Uh, cool. Because our our first idea was to animate um, with frames and not uh, transform keyframes, um, we wouldn't get too much in touch attention on um, the the final scale that is proper uh, to the real reference. But when we we had this issue of uh, data, we had mm -hmm. to to keep the rig version of uh, the character. And the problem of the rig version is that uh, it's um, stiffer, it's more straight, but mm. um, but we keep the consi consistency of the volumes. Yeah. So um, in a way, it's um, losing at some point of the fluidity, but we are uh, winning at uh, the 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 consistency yeah. of the volumes, the shapes, and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah a balance between the two systems yeah yeah so that's why um it's good to have for in my opinion it's good to have the the animatic in stick figures like this uh mm -hmm. because uh you can have really much more flow uh with your animation and uh don't be too um constrained mm -hmm. by yeah constrained by your your rigs so um, this is how it was She's turning. Uh, can you talk a, a little bit about how do you animate these uh, stick figures? Uh, is mostly grab tool or just selecting, duplicating, and moving, and just a simple? It's a it's much more um, selection tool. Selection and moving, yeah. Yeah, selection and moving, yeah. Um, and it's all in one layer, right? This is easy yeah. to select. Yeah, exactly. Um, this animation, this uh, rough animation, was made by Lana. So, hey, Lana. Uh, yeah. OK. I, I will go back a bit before. So, play. It's nice. really cool. It's funny how well it works. Just with yeah. This, with yeah, the also, yeah, also with stick figures, it works really well. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, this is an awesome technique because it can you can really work on the timing, the yeah. process. The, the silhouettes without even thinking about the final model. Yeah. And even if there are some some mistakes, uh, I mean, uh, during the selection, it's OK because we, we can fix it later. So, yeah. so you can really let go with the flow. It's a uh, you animate and, and that's it. Yeah. And, and I wanted to show you something because so Lana made the two characters, Liv and Leonard, and I did um, Stella. And I wanted to show you, um, I don't know um, do, 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 where it is. So you animated together on a scene? Yeah, I first, uh, I wanted to do everything, but I didn't have time. And uh, and Lana, uh, like, uh, she's great for, uh, she animated almost uh, all the um, live parts. Mm. So at this time, we wanted like a really flowing uh, live, um, like, trying to discover a new world. Uh, so um, that worked well. And uh, well, she did a great job. So, um, and you both have the same storyboard to, to, yeah. to reference from. So it was easy yes. to, to share the work between the two. And yes, exactly. So because the timing was already made mm -hmm. uh, before, uh, we knew at some time we had to, to gain uh, time or to lose time, we're not on the right timing in the animation. So, well, in a way, it was uh, it worked well. So I first did uh, Stella, mm -hmm. baby, and then um, you can see also there are some. Annotation. This is yeah annotation, which is great because uh, when you do a first version of the animation, you can show another animator saying, "Okay, how can I how can I do it?" Um, and so you can do really quick animation to to say, OK, now, for example, here, I said, at this frame, I want the kiss and not before. And mm -hmm. then and then there is really a, a wave of the of the hand that was not at the beginning. And so she's mm -hmm. she's taking sp like she gaining speed. And so 
And this is super quick to do. Like in 10 minutes, you already have your annotations and you can send only the, the layer with annotation to to keep um, the file uh, low. Uh, but this is not what I wanted to show. Um, yeah, guide maybe. Yeah, this one. I made a, like a line of the, um, the size. Oh, I lost dip, dip, dip. Uh, because uh, I hope you notice this, uh, because I spent a lot of time on this, uh, that <laughs> um, Stella is uh, is changing like the size when she's baby. Then she can, she grows older and she grows a bit older. So I made a line um, of um, when she will grow in size. So. Mm -hmm like in the space and also um, where are the the her feet where should mm. be her feet uh, to to keep the um, a good animation yeah. path uh, so obviously now it's not on track just to upset me <laughs> <laughs> but now I mean it's um, we first did an animation then we of course uh, change it a bit um, time to time and also there is a rhythm uh, so uh, this was before the feet, the f footprints and the side. It's a uh, with the anim brush. You can see in brown here there is the rhythm I wanted to for Stella. I don't know if you saw it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a yeah. rhythm sketch, right? Yeah, it's a uh, really to to show where. Um, where is she up? Like this, so this, I wanted right to run and then going lower, and so like. Um, you did this for yourself or to communicate with the anime? No, this was for myself because um, it's really to have my my rhythm and my spacing because I didn't know um, how to. Um, well, it was really more helpful to me to say, okay, I want it to go like that way. And you only do frames, then you do the anim brush, and that's it. You have your uh, your timing in a way, and then you you can play with this timing. And uh, yeah, yeah. So that's it for this part. And then uh, let's show. Uh, rough. Just for time check, you're know, almost three minutes to eleven, but um, we okay. can go over. Okay. Uh, I will go. So this is some rigs for um, live. So we tried different styles. Unfortunately, we didn't go with this one because at some point we had to to make too many movements and we didn't have enough data to data space. Um, looks so good though. Yeah, time. it's yeah, it's look. Wow. Yeah, great. Uh, Beautiful mouse. Great work. So clean. And so uh, let's go, for example, for her. So how she is, there is the, um, the bassin, which are the hips. Um, and and we have the the shoes, the feet and the shoe that are on the two different uh, parts um, because it's how we are working uh when when she's walking and there is a like um a hard ground um the shoes are a part uh, the feet are a part of the the hips uh because uh otherwise because there is no um, uh, eye key uh mm. it's easier yeah so, so you, did, you did the david hernandez approach yeah where you yeah exactly fake like an ik right yeah exactly By doing yeah forward kinematics from Reverse. <laughs> yeah, it's a sound. so we have like it's the sound. head. <laughs> we had the. Uh... What is the technique again? So you have basically three different chains, uh, forward kinema uh, forward kinematic chains. So uh, one ends at the hip, the root, and one starts at the foot. So basically, oh, that so way you can, can plant the foot and mm -hmm. rotate the legs from the bottom up, versus the rest is from top down. Yeah, you basically change the where the pivot is on each yeah. on each version, right? Okay. And so and then you have everything like this, and uh, why did it change? 
Well, but the, the rig was already um, in another session, it was explained. So now I want to show you this famous little dot, well, not famous actually, but <laughs> this. Uh, now, it, now it's becoming famous. <laughs> yeah, the little dot techniques. Um, I really like this scene. So um, when they are flowing uh, around each other, Mm -hmm. And to have something very, very, very smooth, that was not easy. And at first, I tried to make it like um, from straight ahead animation, following the the animatic um, an, an, animatic animation, like the rough animation, because it's not animatic, but the rough animation. But the the fact is, we we lost at some point. It was kind of um, jingling. So that's where the little dot techniques appears. Um, it's uh, actually the technique is you have the rough. Uh, so I will show you here. You have the rough of the characters uh, like this. And what I do is go back to the basics and, um, and do the arcs of the, the animation. So here I have, for instance, I made for each frame like little dots on each uh, part where are the the foot and as you can see it's normal there are some some moments where it's jumping mm -hmm. and here if I press on where is it so I make different dots for where it is in the the animation and then I will go with the I will trace the arcs of the animation Mm -hmm. And so it will help us at the end to 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 be sure, for example, the knee or the hip or the the foot yeah. keeps with the arc, and so we have something that is smooth. So, for instance, for her, everything was made so we have something like this at the end, yeah. which I found pretty this cool. Is that, yeah, this is something that we do all the time in CG animation with my. Yeah. We just uh, we paint on the screen. Uh, well, before we used to draw directly on the screen, and, yeah. and now Maya and all these programs they have this kind of two D sketch uh, mm. tool that allows you to paint on top of your screen with uh, Wacom or whatever. So yeah, we do this all the time because it's so hard to keep a nice arcs, yeah. a nice spacing, and in Quill even is really really hard. So yeah, so it's well. So that's why I said I didn't invent it, everything, <laughs> of course. <laughs> no, but but, will, uh, yeah, you, you do. So that's why you, you do the little dots everywhere. And then you connect yeah. the dots and uh, you have this flow, uh, which is yeah. pretty cool. And you can even afterward, like playing, selecting, and with the grab tool, changing what you want. And so. So Ooh. this is more like, you know, like. After the rough animation, you draw the path the way it was, and yep. then you start fixing, polishing the curves. Exactly, exactly. So here, but animated with transform, no? Yeah. So where it is here? Um, for example, here it's the two. Tuck, tuck, and up. up. There are the two together, and then when she's uh, working. So this is uh, the part of the animation. Yeah, the knees are the ones that yeah. Yeah, so lot. so you see the, the knees are here in the in yeah. the um, red and uh, and green. Green. Huh? The the hands and the hips also in in dark blue. Mm -hmm. And so that really a, a way to it takes time. Afterward, but at least you're sure that everything is uh, is uh, it's clean. And if there is uh, at some point you you find, for instance, the 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 hand is too low, you can just follow the arcs you chose and quickly change uh, the uh, um, the dot. Yeah, where the dot actually lands on the. On the at on the center of the rig pivot, yeah. Or um, you... no, actually, uh, it depends. Um, like it's so like in the of the wrist on the center of the heel. 
Um, for in, I, yeah, I, for I, the I, hips here, I can shoot. Tick, tick, tick. For yeah. the hips, I I it, I put it here. Um, that yeah, which is actually at the center of the of the rig because the mm. hips um, is where we started the animation. Mm. Um, so we started first with the hips, then with the feet, then we are connecting the the legs and. And so yeah. we had first to, to have a really clean hip. And so if I can show you the the hips here. Yeah. Um, so also the arcs help a lot when you're using transform keyframe to for the um, the tangent mm -hmm. of the of the um, gimbal. You can yeah, see of the, the gimbal. rotation, right? Yeah. yeah. So, oh yeah, the tangents. But oh, but hang on, but it's a stepped. It's a stepped key. So yeah, it's like, stepped. Everything is yeah. stepped. Okay, yeah. So because you're keeping the the tangent uh, going oh, wow. with the arcs, you you can see it's a uh, smoother than if you are just like uh, moving. You did you never had a, the temptation to do some automatic in betweening for especially for like a small cushions, a small, a small yeah. So, uh, we did it actually from time to time. Um, for um, the the problem is no, actually, we we did it for a, a base of animation of a cleaning after in steps. Uh, mm -hmm. Because we first have um, like okay, if I show you, um, if we have live here uh, in the um, I don't know, I can put it here. Mm -hmm. um, if you are setting a frame here and a frame mm -hmm. there, and here you have uh, is in or is out. Mm -hmm. uh, the the of course I have to change a bit otherwise you don't see anything. Um, if you want to keep that kind of movement, mm -hmm. uh, you um, you create new keys. Yeah, yeah. You, you you need you need a, a new keys, but then you still have the is out on this section and not anymore on this section. Mm. So, so you the better way is to kind of duplicate, for example, the the hips. Do yeah. one uh, on uh, like um, with the interpolation, and then with the the real one doing on steps uh, matching the the oh, frame by frame. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so thank you for. Uh, joining me and letting me showing a bit more of goodbye mr octopus thank you so much man and if you have questions i'm done for it and of course i hope i'm more happy and nice than this guy in the gift. <laughs> so. so so we we have a question uh, thank you again okay. for uh, for for running this presentation this was really awesome um i'm definitely gonna do the eye trick for sure like i like gave me some ideas like the, yeah. the staring that's really cool and um, yeah, so so super super cool insights, you know. So thank you for doing this. We have a question from Tyler. He's asking when using those PNGs for the wall, ceiling, 3D environment, spheres, etc. Mm -hmm. They they all seem high res. What kind of impact did that have on memory? And what was the final product's total memory? Um. So uh, I can try to find the size. Uh... Let me here right now. Um, it it was not that much high res because actually the the definition of the quest uh, let us uh, be more um, fle flexible. <laughs> flexible, yeah, cle clearly. Uh, there are some things to know, for example, with the transparency of the PNG. Or like um, if it's a uh, if it's not really like made on the right way you can have a small um alias on the um, 
on the edges, right? On the edges, yeah. yeah I've right. seen those. I didn't know if there was a way to actually fix that before. Um, so I figure when you, it usually happens if you have transparent PNGs and then you make the canvas a little bit bigger so the pixels don't go all the way to the edge, you should be able to make them disappear. If the pixels oh. goes all the way to the edge, then it, you will always have like this little small line. Yeah, like the little sliver at the very topper yeah. sides. Yeah. So Amory, how how big like yeah. how wide is a PNG? Like was it like ten twenty four or did so you go to two K or this uh, like a wall from the room is? Let me check. It's um, sixteen hundred to eight hundred. Okay. Oh wow! So, yeah, that's not as big as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a three hundred k octave. So that's cool. That's and cool. do you remember the final size of, of the IMM? Yeah, like how much memory? How much memory you used in the performance panel? Was it like over a gigabyte or? Um, it was one point two gigabyte. Nice. Uh, and when we tr first tried with only um, tr uh, keyframes, we did like a vertical slice and we tried to match the amount of uh, animation, everything to kind of understand how much it will uh, represent doing only keyframes and not transform keyframes. And we arrived right. to six gigabyte. Mm. So, that, so that was clearly too much. So that's why we, <laughs> we, we, we took the right decision to go to transform keyframes. The, the funny thing is that transform keyframes with high res um, uh, characters were lower than the um, animation stick figures. Hmm. In, in terms <laughs> that's of data. Cool. That's yeah. crazy. That's that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, because it only considers the 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 geometry that's visible at that particular frame, yeah. and if, if if the geometry is not in visible in the frame. It doesn't consider it, so yeah, yeah, totally. And so the oh. IMM file was around two hundred mega, 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 yeah. two hundred yeah. mega. Whoa, nice. So when Kurt has a question, um, did you feel that live scale of the scenes didn't work well as small scale? So I think the question is because most of the stuff is miniature, right? Like, yeah. So it's like a little bit smaller. So um, his question is, did that for you work better than having it live scale? Um, yeah, for me, yes, because um, obviously when everything is smaller, um, you you get rid of all the imperfections, uh, which is one point uh, that is not neglectable. Mm -hmm. um, but also I, I feel when everything is a bit smaller, you are more connected. Like not connecting to the um, uh, emotion, but connecting with the story. And when everything is high, like uh, life scale or bigger scale than you, you are connecting more with the emotions. I don't know if that makes sense. Absolutely. But... I think I think um, one powerful moment in that story is where you see Liv actually really big, right? Where you yeah. really feel her emotions and you feel like close. And you know, like I, I think it's like different. Yeah, different intentions behind it. If you want to follow the story overall, it's usually easier if you get a bigger picture, so everything is miniature. And then if mm -hmm. you want emotion, it, def it definitely works better when it's like live scale. So yeah, you guys have like um, you, you decided to have like multiple different types of scales in within the story, right? Mm -hmm. like just for that reason. Yes, yes, but um, it's true. I had first the um... The idea of something a bit smaller in scale because um, it's kind of magical to see. It's like toys moving in front of yeah. you. Yeah, I agree with that, man. I, I mean, the the scene of the jungle with the mom walking from from one side to the other is so beautiful to see, mm -hmm. and and you just and the mom really is like the size of an action figure, maybe bigger mm -hmm. for for, you, for the viewer, right? Mm -hmm. But it. But it works so well. The, the 3D parallax uh, works better when something is miniature instead of uh, the the life the life size. Sometimes you lose that 3D parallax uh, that is so cool to to feel that kind of uh, three dimension. Yeah. Also, so, yeah. one thing to one thing to note is also uh, if you do frame by frame, 
um, usually like uh, life skill is a little bit more violent <laughs> to look at yeah. um, because you see the frame differences. Oh, yeah, if you use yeah. transform keyframes with uh, smooth curves, then you can do it life scale. But you know, like I notice if you do life scale and do frame by frame, then you definitely have to be more um, granular with the, with the in betweens. You know? Yeah, indeed. Uh, we have a next question. Furman is asking, did you use some kind of video reference for animation? Um, actually, yes. Um, so we, for example, when um, the scene I showed you, the T12, the 212 where uh, Liv is uh, leaving, and um, I recorded myself on the ground how um, Leonard is um, standing up. <laughs> because for me that was not an obvious uh, movement, mm. and um, and I know Lana told me also uh, she she made a lot of uh, references and, uh, and 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 tried this and uh, it's always helpful to to see how characters will would move in real life to to exaggerate some some lines of the the animation. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, we did. Uh, to, to... Yeah, to add to this question, um, what I found interesting in VR, because um, I used to shoot, and when I was an animator, I used to shoot a lot of video references too, but I feel like VR gives you that superpower that you can become the character. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I would just put myself into the character at life scale and then move my body the way I want the character to move. And then I'm basically standing inside the character or next to him. And then I can just match the pose to my real life self. And mm -hmm. that was something that was really crazy for me to experience because when, when you do squash and stretch and stuff like that, you can actually feel where the muscles stretch and then you can adjust your model next to you according to your movement. And um, when I did a Spider-Man animation, th that way it looked so much more dynamic because I could translate what I feel to the character versus what I see on a 2D video reference. You know? So that's mm -hmm. another way to um, use your body as a reference, you know, um, additionally to the traditional methods we had. And I thought that was like a powerful addition, mm -hmm. again, that is native to VR. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then Olga is asking, um, how long did the project take from concept to finish? And what would you do differently if you did it again? Uh, great question. <laughs> uh, it's always nice to say great question. <laughs> I feel it's really <laughs> But it's true. It's a great question. Um, the idea of the scenario uh, was like born on one year ago in uh, like uh, July or August 2019. But actually the scenario on this, um, because the first story was different, but the, the final scenario, uh, we started to write it this January. And, um, and because we knew already that uh, we wanted some characters and uh, that they wouldn't change, we started uh, with Lea on February, if I don't um, make a mistake, uh, to build the, the characters in VR when the scenario was not over yet, um, because we knew we had already to make some tests. And so everything started really the production in Quill in, um, in February and um, ended in the um, beginning of August. Uh, and as you knew already, uh, there, there was some um, uh, health problem in the world. So everything yeah. was uh, in, made quite in lockdown. Yeah. So um, there are some funny stories about this. It's like uh, Fred, which is, who is an animator, uh, took a computer from the studio to his house where he didn't have any internet yet. So we started to work with him without any internet and only the cell phone uh, sending wow. the files in Quill. Uh, we made uh, many calls uh, uh, in VR or not in VR to 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 discuss everyone and to. Wait, uh, how how would you send files like in a USB stick or? No, no, with a, with these phones like so for with a 4G. But after, after, no, oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, so. 
But <laughs> when you have like big fights, queer fights, at, after some time, your network company will say, okay, maybe you're pushing too much the 4G. So it was, <laughs> uh, during the lockdown to have the internet, it was not even easy. So that was the friendly part. And um, But like, interestingly, we had a cloud where uh, all the files were shared. I think everything worked well, uh, working uh, distance, everyone, because you can easily share notes in VR and you don't have to be next to the one saying, okay, no, just just move it here or on the left, more on the right. You you just do it in VR, the annotations. And so you can you can work well with this. And the was, second part of the question was, um, what would you do differently? Yeah, what would I do, do differently? Well, a, a big part of the answer is that we change in the middle of the the project the way the workflow because we wanted first to make uh, key f- like keyframe animations and then we changed to transform keyframes. So mm, yeah, I think that's a big one. Yeah. So I think I would do for another project um, have um, the rough animation not that much um, detailed, mm. more of uh, with more flows and then cleaning it uh, easier with the, the rig. So yeah, because the, the good part is we first made all the rough animations before deciding to change the workflow because if we started to do everything in keyframes, um, we would have, like spend again two or three months of animating again. So hopefully yeah. we had this pre-animation uh, oh. made with the rough animation. So mm-hmm. so yes, I guess maybe a bit less uh, details on the rough animation uh, <clears throat> to 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 get more actions in the way, but. Um, um, Save and, more time. And yeah, and be also, more efficient. yeah, also, also one thing is that because the characters are um, kind of real characters with feet and knees and everything. For for instance, the first scene when they are in the rooms, and the last scene when they are also in the rooms, it's like two minutes animation. Uh, without any stops, without any different shots and cuts, and so it was really a marathon for uh, for Fred and and I like doing the the animation on each part. So maybe in the story I will not put two minutes of uh, sequence animation <laughs> because you have to animate everything, and after a while it's like. Okay, because you can move anywhere you want, so it should be good on any side. So, um, yeah, may, like maybe think more about the the scenario to be sure. Well, I think it worked fine. It worked well at the end, but uh, it was much more um, a challenge from the side. Like uh, we said, okay, we can do this. We we want to show we can do it. So let's try it. But. It's a, um, it's time consuming and uh, it's uh, after when you you spend months on only one scene, it can be long after a while. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know. That looks amazing. Well, next uh, question from Kurt. Um, oh. He's asking: During the afternoon scene when Stella walked through the sunlight, I noticed there was no cast shadow. Was it a conscious decision not to include a shadow in that section? Uh, at, at, uh, you mean uh, the shadows on the grounds or everything? I think yeah. I, yeah. He's he's pointing out um, that yeah. there was no cast shadow, and um, he's asking if that was a conscious decision. Um, to do that so clearly uh, we wanted first to have shadows everywhere but we were limited by uh, the um, like draw calls and everything already when you have a character that has like 20 draw calls when you have two characters when you have again like uh, bedrooms with also draw calls you quickly go to the limits and so it so was more like a sacrifice yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, also after a while we 
we didn't have so much time to dedicate on this uh, and obviously I, uh, there are some things I would have liked to to be more precise uh, for the shadows for instance this, this yeah. is a great part the shadows because indeed it's uh, something that adds a lot uh, but um, it was a sacrifice and not a, a pleasant one but I think <laughs> at the end it works uh, it works still but um, it works beautifully. I actually have a um, follow up question to that. Um, the jungle scene is one of my favorite sequences. It really looks like beautiful. And um, I noticed that you guys have a lighting change on her. Uh, yeah. on um, on Liv and uh, did you guys mix transform keyframes with frame by frame to make that happen or how did you approach lighting like the dapple lighting on her to you know like move that, that she moves through the light I thought that was super successful and just wanted to know yeah. how you guys approached that so yeah we have um, basically we have uh, the rig with uh, on each layer we, each group, there is a layer showing the, um, uh, for instance, the, the thigh, the the, yeah. the belly, the, the shoulders, and everything. And we have one group uh, of uh, with the head, and in this we have cut it with the hair, the eyes, the face, uh, and the lips. So we have four different layers for the head. So yeah. um, that helped us. Afterward, yes, to to make frame by frame keyframes, not transform keyframes, um, uh, directly on the on the layers. And if we are adding light on the hair, uh, we are not adding adding light on the face. So we are already oh. um, saving the geometry in the the face. Yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah yeah, 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 no, absolutely. So so you did basically. If the light is hitting the hair, you would only duplicate frames within the hair in that transform yeah. keyframe layer, and then colorize it basically frame by frame, right? Exactly. Wow. So it's a it's a mix. Impressive. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a mix of transform keyframes and and keyframes uh, when there is a light. Yeah. Uh, also, the the thing that is uh, nice with the transform keyframe and the rig is. Um, for for the leg, for instance, when Stella is in the evening room and she's uh, working in the light, um, at some point when she's going out of the light, um, there will be the thigh that will be lighted, but not the um, the lower the calf, yeah, to the calves, yeah, yeah, to calves. So you can cut in a way the the calf uh, on the animation and then cut. The, the 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 keyframe of the thigh. So um, again, it's a kind of optimization to not have at the same time and saving. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Time. Yeah, the good thing is that everything if you use transform keyframes, everything is stays right. So if you make a yeah. change, it's permanent. So it's it's really yeah. cool, and you can even add things if you forgot like some detail on the pants. You could just easily add it to yeah. the original layer and I that's what so. i love about the transform keyframe so much because it's extremely efficient yeah. it might be a little bit more difficult to manage all the keyframes and the layers but then once you understand it it's super powerful and uh, yeah. it's it's something yeah we had also when stella is changing her shape um uh, in the t 212 section where she's a baby and then uh, growing older is that we have a rig and it was a bit massive to implement first because uh, for the shoulders, we have a shoulder of Stella at, at one year old and inside the same uh, folder we have at three and five or... But I have okay. one more question. Is there still a scene in there where the character is fully frame by frame or did you completely transition to <laughs> transfer? No, actually, there is one moment where everything is still Good. frame by frame. <laughs> uh, Which scene is it? Uh, you didn't notice, no. <laughs> yeah. So it's um, when they are moving together and she's uh, messing with him, uh, when Liv is messing with Leonard, and um, he has the package 
like the yeah, yeah, yeah. in the arms and uh, yeah. she's like playing uh, with the shoulders and giving a kiss. Only this yeah. part when we have like a different color. Uh, yeah. This scene was made very early stage and we kept it like this because it worked well. So, yeah. And it was small enough, I guess. Yeah, it was small enough. Yeah. It was short yeah. enough and small enough, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I think that's it for the question. Thank you so much for driving this today. It was Thank you. awesome to see the insights. And I'm um, looking forward uh, to spread the recording to the world. It's really, it's mm. been really great. Thank you so much, Omri. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, super cool. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. I'm stoked Thank for you. Goodbye, Mr. Octopus 2 now. <laughs> <laughs>